we're going to look at a problem that relates to um, all those patterns we, we noticed about where trig functions are positive and negative. So just recall that a helpful, a helpful mnemonic is uh, all students take calculus. All the trig functions are positive in quadrant one. Only sine is positive in quadrant two. Only tangent in quadrant three. Only cosine of quadrant four. So now let's take a look at this example. It says find the cosine of an angle and the cotangent of that angle if the sine of the angle is 1 over 4 and the tangent of that angle is less than 0, in other words, negative. So this, this all means that the tangent of the angle is negative. So tangent is negative. Well, we're told that the sine is 1 over 4, and if you look at 1 over 4, that's a positive ratio. So that limits, that narrows down the two quadrants we could possibly be in, because sine is, is positive in two quadrants. It's positive in the a quadrant, because all in quadrant 1, because all the trig functions are positive there, and it's positive in quadrant 2, where only sine is positive. So... At this point, we sort of have two options for where we could draw our picture, right? It could be possible that we rotated a certain angle and landed in quadrant one. And if the sine is one over four, if the sine is one over four, by definition of sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, that would be a one and that would be a four. That's a possibility. Or we could have rotated and landed in quadrant two. Um, you could have loaded, landed in quadrant two. And again, the definition of sine tells us that if the sine of the angle is one over four, the opposite must be one and the hypotenuse would be a 4. So which one of these diagrams are we going to use? Well, that's where this comes in. It says that tangent is negative, less than 0. Where is tangent negative? Well, they're all positive here, so tangent is not negative here. But tangent is negative here because only sine is positive here. So that means we don't want to look at this picture here because tangent is positive here, and this is telling us that tangent is negative. So it's given us information to help us narrow down which picture to use. So this is the diagram we're going to use up now. And let's look at what we have to evaluate. We have to evaluate the cosine and the cotangent. Well, here's our reference angle. And we can get these answers, but we first need to know what this distance is here. Because cotangent and cosine both involve that length. So uh, let's do the Pythagorean theorem. We'll call this something. Uh, we'll call it x for x, because it's an x distance. And let's go find it. So x squared by the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus 1 squared equals 4 squared. And so x squared plus 1 equals 16. So x squared equals, if you subtract 1, 15. So x equals the square root of 15. And that's actually going to be the negative square root of 15 because this is a negative distance. So whether you, I mean, we could write it here, but as long as in your diagram you remember to call that a negative length because it's a negative x value, you'll be all set. And now we're ready to answer the question because cosine of theta is, if we use our reference angle, adjacent over hypotenuse, negative root 15 divided by hypotenuse is 4, and the cotangent is opposite over adjacent. I'm sorry, that's tangent. A tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is the reciprocal, so it's negative root 15 over 1. And those are our answers.
So notice this information narrows it down to two, uh, narrows it down to two quadrants where we could draw our triangle, and this narrows it down to one. So at that point, we can draw a picture and answer these questions.